This is our third momentum video. I know we're moving kind of quickly through this, but for all but two of you, it should be review so far at this point. Um, and we're going to get into the very special case of elastic collisions. In an elastic collision, the way that we're going to define it is an object after the collision leaves the center of mass with equal in magnitude but opposite in direction velocity. So an object leaves the center of mass with an equal but opposite velocity. Now in the case when the velocity of the center of mass is zero, this is very simple, very easy to figure out. It's not always that easy. So we're going to look at two examples and then the general case at how to do this. But I want to be very clear. Not every collision between two objects where they don't stick is elastic. It's only elastic when I say so, or the, pr the problem says so. So it's only elastic when it's called never ever jump to conclusions about elastic collisions. It will mess you up. And by that I mean you won't get the problem right. It's not going to mess you up. Mess you up. So let's say we have our same five kilogram blocks. This time we're back to moving at 10 meters per second for one of them. And for the other one, we're not moving. So in this case, the velocity of the center of mass is going to be we have 5 times 10 plus 0 divided by 10. The velocity of the center of mass is equal to 5 meters per second. Now, in order to do something with this statement that an object leaves the center of mass with an equal but opposite velocity, we have to transform our coordinate system, um, which means we have to do something to all of our velocities. Look at it as if we're sitting on top of the center of mass. So that the velocity of the center of mass is zero, which means we're subtracting five from everything. So this five kilogram mass subtracted five is moving towards the velocity of center of mass at five meters per second, still going forwards. And this other one, subtracted five has negative five meters per second of velocity. Each one of these objects is approaching the center of mass at five meters per second. So what's going to happen after they hit with respect to the center of mass is that those velocities flip around. V1 just becomes negative V1 or um, 5 meters per second in the opposite direction and this is now positive 5 meters per second. And the problem is that's not lab coordinates and that's not something you're going to observe directly. So what we have to do is come out of this new um, reference system back into lab coordinates. So if we subtracted 5 to get down here, we're going to have to add 5 to see what actually happened to each of these objects in the collision. So 5 meters per second. Negative 5 plus 5 tells me that this velocity is 0 meters per second, and this velocity is... 10 meters per second in this direction. What we've just done is solve for an elastic collision. And we've taken information that we knew, um, M1, V1 plus M2, V2. And solve for two unknown variables. Those of you in physics B last year, when you solved for elastic collisions, probably used the conservation of energy and did a page and a half worth of algebra, which is great if you're into that sort of thing. I'm not. This way of solving 
elastic collisions is using the center of mass reference frame. That's what this whole business is about. And to make sure that you caught it, we're going to go through one more specific example with numbers. They're not going to be as nice. So I'm going to have to pause and do some calculations with these numbers. So let's say, oh, I hate this. We have a three kilogram object moving at two meters per second. And that's going to run into a seven kilogram object, worst number ever, um, moving in the same direction at one meter per second. It's about as nasty as the numbers can get. <clears throat> so first thing we really need to do is find the velocity of the center of mass of this system. So we have three times two plus seven times one divided by 10. Uh, 6 plus 7 is 13, divided by 10 is 1.3. So, now we have a number. The velocity of center of mass is right here in the middle, 1.3 meters per second. And what we need to do is make the velocity of the center of mass 0. And to do that, we subtract 1.3 meters per second. So, in the reference frame of the center of mass, my three kilogram object is moving at 0.7 meters per second this way. And my seven kilogram object is moving one minus 1.3 at negative 0.3 meters per second, which means it's moving in the backwards direction. So when they hit, because this is an elastic collision, all that we see after they hit and bounce apart for the three kilogram object is that it moves now with negative 0.7 meters per second. And then our seven kilogram object moves with positive 0.3 meters per second of velocity. They hit and they bounce off and they take the velocities that they had going into the center of mass out with them. All there is to it. But that's not real life, and so we have to come back to real life by taking our center of mass that's not moving and make it move like it was before at 1.3 meters per second. So we add. 1.3 meters per second. Hmm. Which means negative 0.7 plus 1.3 is 0.6. Okay, so this is now moving forward in the positive direction at 0 0.6 meters per second for the three kilogram object and then positive 0.3 plus 1.3 this is now moving in the same direction seven kilogram object at 1.6 meters per second and that's our general case of velocity center of mass again we just solved an equation with two unknowns without doing crazy algebra doing other stuff it's the joy of physics. <clears throat> this is how we're going to solve elastic collisions when they're elastic, which means it either says it's elastic or it says that energy, that kinetic energy is conserved in the collision. What I'm about to show you is gonna make doing these ridiculously easy. So let's take and do this with variables. So we're gonna use some variables to look at how this works. We're gonna call this V1, we're going to call this V1 prime, we're going to call this U1, and we're going to call this U1 prime. And we're going to call the velocity of the center mass the velocity of the center mass. That's going to be the same in each case. <clears throat> so, V1 prime, our final velocity, V1 prime, was equal to U1 prime plus the velocity of the center of mass. Essentially, all I'm saying is 0.6 was equal to negative 0.7 plus 1.3. But I know that u1 prime is equal to 
negative u1. So v1 prime is equal to negative u1 plus the velocity of the center of mass. Well, that's still not that useful to me. But I can come over here and say that u1 is equal to v1 minus the velocity of center of mass. So if I, if I stick that in here, uh, v1 prime is equal to negative okay, v1 minus the velocity of the center of mass plus the velocity of the center of mass. Well, that's negative, so that becomes negative, that becomes positive. And v1 prime, my final velocity is equal to twice the velocity of the center of mass minus that object's initial velocity. Boom. That formula right there will tell you the velocity of this object after an elastic collision with this object. Not having to do too much work. Suggest keeping this in your back pocket of tools. Uh, and when you use it, try to make some of the drawings. Because we need to see that kind of work from you uh, that shows you actually understand what's going on.